Hello, Yawning Angel back again. Yes, another Amos video. And in this video, we're gonna take a look at trying to recreate deluxe paint using Amos. <laughs> what? Seriously? I really don't think that's possible. Uh, but you know, good luck with that. <laughs> oh, who would have thought it? <laughs> well, he does have a point, but it's not gonna stop us from creating a very usable graphics editing tool using our favorite Amiga programming language. It is very doable. So in this video, we're gonna go back and take a look at some stuff we've already covered, things like creating menus, uh, checking our mouse movements, checking for mouse clicks, but we're also gonna look at some of Amos's built-in graphics capabilities, like using commands like plot, draw, bar, and even circle. And I think we can create a fairly competent graphics editing tool, which will be of some use. So without further ado, let's dive in. But before we get coding, I just wanna give you a quick overview as to the kind of thing we're gonna wind up producing. So we'll have this program where straight out the box, we can make use of the plot command to do some freehand sketching with the mouse. Uh, we can make use of the draw command to draw straight lines. We can make use of the box command to draw a box. Uh, we can then use the bar command to create a filled box. Um, we can also clear the screen and we can make use of the circle command to, you guessed it, draw a circle. We're also going to look at how to select colors from a menu and be able to use that when we're doing our shapes. All good stuff. Um, and we're gonna look at how to save the image as well for use maybe in another arts package. This is gonna be great fun. So now let's get on with the coding. Uh, before we get going, mouthful of tea. Maybe two mouthfuls. Oh, it's a good cup of tea. Good cup of tea to start us off. Right, here we are in the kind of template version of this program, which I've already created. So here you can see, um, I've got my usual comments. This program, shall we call it Ya Amos Doodle? Because it's a bit of a doodling type of graphics program, but we'll see. Anyway, uh, let's dive in. Some code I have already started. So um, here I've already defined the screen, which we're going to open, a 320 by 200 screen, 16 colors, low resolution. You know all of this stuff. If you've been following these tutorials, you know what's going on here. Uh, turning the cursor off, the flash off, clear screen for color two, which is white, uh, ink nine, which is a dark gray, paper two, pen nine, kind of self-explanatory. This is all stuff I've trialed and errored and works nicely. Anyway, uh, with that, what we're gonna do then is define our global variables. Uh, global variables, and we're going to initiate, not initialate. Here we go, the first spelling mistakes are already creeping in. <laughs> right, um, then we're gonna set up some menus. We've covered menus before. I've covered menus in a previous video. There'll be a link up above somewhere for that, but I'll just go over them again. So we're gonna have a file and exit menu, we're gonna have an edit menu, and we're gonna have an image menu. We're gonna have a color selection menu as well, but that will come in a future video. We're not covering that in this one because this will be an advanced menu in Amos. So we'll come on to that in a future video. Right, um, then what we're gonna do, we're gonna limit the mouse uh, to the confines of the visible screen. We've then got a main loop here, which is, we're doing a lot of stuff in this main loop and be under no illusion, there was a lot of code to get through in there. So I'm going to uh, try and get through a, as efficiently as I can. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna um, control the updating of a side information panel, which will tell us what tools we have selected, what colors we've got, what we're doing basically. We're then gonna get our start position from the mouse. So it's gonna keep detecting where the mouse is. We're gonna convert those mouse coordinates to screen coordinates. Don't forget, mouse coordinates are hardware coordinates and we need to convert them to screen coordinates. All stuff we've covered before. We're then gonna print those coordinates to the side panel <coughs> or the information panel as it were. Uh, then we're going to start doing some drawing. So we're gonna check, excuse me, uh, has the left mouse button been held down? If it has, we're going to start drawing a line or drawing a squiggle with it. 
then we're going to handle the menu use. And all of that is contained within this main do loop. Right. We're then going to deal with selections from the image menu. We're going to control that separately. We're going to look at controlling the image tool functionality. We're going to deal with obtaining the X and Y coordinates from two mouse clicks. And this will become apparent in a while. Uh, effectively, when we go to draw something, the only way that I can see to do it for now, and there may be better ways of doing this, there's the caveat, there may be better ways of doing this. And if you know, leave information about that in the comments section down below. But we're going to, uh, when we like do a line, we're going to click a start position and click an end position and the line will appear. That's what the code in here will do. We've got a bit of a housekeeping procedure here where we're going to clear down the mouse coordinates. That will become apparent later. And then we've got a procedure down the bottom here to print the relevant information to the side panel. Quick trivia tip for you here, or quick trivia thing rather. Why is it called a side panel? Because when I started writing this program, it was a side panel. It appeared on the side of the screen. And then I changed it to appear at the bottom and I haven't changed the wording. So it should be a bottom panel, but I think side panel works better. Right, so I'm going to dive straight in and define a load of global variables. So these will be variables which be used in all the, can be used in any procedure within the program. Um, so I'm going to get on and define this. I'm not going to go through what each one of them is. That will become apparent as we go through the code. But to define our global variables, the first thing we do is use the, the instruction global. And then I'm just going to start typing. So we've got uh, x, s, and x, y. They must be x and y coordinates, really. Um, x, m, and uh, m, y, which are mouse coordinates. Then I've got uh, x, s, 1, and I've got y, s, 1. And then I've got uh, x, s, 2 and ys2. Uh, once again, these are all coordinates. Then I've got a string called selected dollar. Um, then I've got a, whoops, a variable, um, a numeric variable uh, called chosen ink, which holds my ink color. This variable is not going to come into effect in this program. Uh, because this will be part of the color menu selection, which we'll do in a future video, but I'm setting it up for now anyway. Um, and then we've got a, a variable, or rather a flag, called a side panel updated. Okay, so that's my global variables done. Right, good. Now let's get into the menus. Now you probably know about menus, but if this is your first time here uh, talking about Amos menus, welcome. Menus are quite easily defined. So we're going to use the instruction uh, menu dollar. So for our first menu, which will be menu one, uh, we're going to call this the file menu. File menu. I'm leaving some spaces after it, about three characters after it. That gives you that little bit of spacing between the menus. So uh, don't forget to do that. Otherwise, they're all bunched up together. They still work, but they're just bunched up together. So that's what our menu one is called. Then what we're going to do is use menu dollar again, and we're going to set the first, for that first menu, the first option in there is going to be save image. One, two, three, three spaces after that as well. Save image, yawning angel. Yes, we're going to have this program save this image out to disk. Happy days. Right, then what I'm going to do, um, now I don't know any other way of doing this, so if anyone knows out there, please let me know. So 1, 2, oh, 1, 3, I'm, 1, 2, I'm just going to put a spacer in here, um, just something to put a bit of a limit, a bit of a break between, between commands. You can kind of see that in menus, don't you? They're kind of grouped into sections. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Then what I'm going to do is menu dollar 1, 3, uh, is going to equal quit, end the program. One, two, three. Actually, I might push this all the way up to the end so this is all uniform. And there we go. That will be our menu. That's menu one, and then the edit menu. I'll just start this off. Uh, menu uh, dollar uh, equals, no, it doesn't. Menu dollar two equals edit. And then we'll do menu dollar, guess what it is? Two comma one, uh, that will equal ba, 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 
clear. We'll just do that for now. That's all we're going to have in our edit menu. Let's just tidy this code up a bit. And then I'm going to do, oops, and then I'm going to do the image menu and I'll go away and do that now and come back when I've done it. Right, cup of tea. Mm. I'm going to be getting through a lot of tea today doing this. <laughs> right, I have done coding. Um, the menu, so uh, edit menu we did. So I've added in the image, the image menu, which is menu three. So we've got three, 3.1, 3.2, 3 3.3. Color menu will just say color for now and the rest of this will come later. Don't forget when you're dealing with menus, you then have to issue the menu on command, quite important, otherwise it won't work. Um, and then I've added in the limiting of the mouse and I've put in these coordinates of 128,50 to 448,215. Please be aware these are hardware coordinates. So trial and error. Don't forget I did release a utility program some time ago which will help you get um, hardware coordinates. There's a link to that up here as well. Right, so we've got a program basically which should run. So if I press F1, I've got a white screen, which is what I would expect. Nothing else shown, but oh look, my mouse. My mouse won't go any further. It's not going down any further. Okay, so that's the limit mouse working. Uh, if I right click, now look, I've got a file menu, I've got my edit menu, I've got my image menu, and I've got my color menu. Color menu doesn't have anything in it, but everything else does. Of course, nothing is working because I haven't put the code in for this yet, but here we are. We're making progress. I can hit quit and nothing happens. Because this program is in a loop, it's now running in a loop. I need to hit Control C to enter the program, and we're back in the code. Right, and here we are. We're in the main loop. So the first thing I need to do now is let's put some stuff on the screen for the side panel. So um, I'm just going to dive into this code and I'll explain it as we go along. Uh, so if side panel updated uh, equals zero, um, what I need here, I need uh, selected, selected dollar equals plot, spaces after that. Um, then I need to go to a procedure called side panel, which we haven't written yet. And then we set side panel updated equals one, end it. Right, um, yeah, undefined procedure because I haven't defined side panel yet. What I need to do is up here, um, I think I've missed some code out. Yawning Angel, you have missed some code out. As part of my defining my variables, something I do need to do up here is set chosen ink equals to nine, because we're not actually setting chosen ink in the program from a menu. I've just, we're just kind of hard coding it now just to be dark gray, and that's uh, nine. Then what I need to do is do a uh, side panel updated uh, equals zero. So I need to set this flag. So rem uh, zero equals false, one equals true. Very important. I don't need to be side panel yawning angel, uh, side panel. Right, let's just save that. So uh, this is a flag basically. Has the side panel been updated? Yes or no? True or false? So what's happening in this piece of code down here in my main loop is I'm just checking, have I updated it? Well, no, I haven't. So I need to set the tool I've selected as the plot tool. I now need to go into my side panel procedure and update the panel. And then when I come out of that, I've gone, well, I've updated it now, so I'm setting it to one, and that's it. Basically, by putting this check around this piece of code, because this is inside a do loop, this will stop this piece of code constantly being executed when it doesn't need to be. It only needs to be uh, executed when the tool changes, but also when the graphics coordinates change with the mouse, and I'll come on to that later. Right, so what we need to do is actually write that um, side panel um, uh, piece of code, don't we? So uh, I'm just frantically going through and looking for that code. Right, here it is. So basically it's right at the bottom of the program. 
And what we're going to do is procedure side panel, panel, and proc write. OK, and what we're going to do in here is I'm going to write the code for this, and I'll come back to you when I've done it. I'm going to need to get more tea in a minute. I should just make a teapot of tea, shouldn't I? And just have that here and just constantly keep... That's a great idea. Teapot for the next video. We're going to do that. OK, uh, what have I done? I've created this side panel uh, code. And really, it's just basic setting up a static panel. Um, set some ink colours here. I use the bar command to draw a solid bar. Um, I use the draw command just to draw a little line along the top. I'm just using locate to position my uh, pen cursor where I'm going to show what tool it is we're using. I'm going to print out whatever selected string is and I'm going to show what color is being used um, and I'm just going to show whatever the value is for chosen ink and of course ink here will be set as chosen ink. Really straightforward stuff. If I run that, this is what my screen looks like now. So as you can see, I can't move the mouse into that. I've got a bit of a problem with the mouse there. Might have to, it's not actually nudging that line. Might have to change that. But anyway, you can see here, I've got the tool being shown and the color being shown, dark gray, sexy. Uh, I've got a menu. So effectively, we've actually got a structure now to this program and we haven't done a great deal. I mean, I think that's looking pretty good. Uh, I've got to use Control C to break back into the program. Um, because I haven't got the code in then to handle the menus, which we're going to do now. But now I've got side panel selected. I can press uh, F2. We know there's no errors because the program has run. I can press F3, indents and tidies itself up nicely. Right, now let's get into the meat of this. <laughs> okay, um, so what we're going to do now is get the start position uh, from the mouse. And that is just going to be M equals mouse key. Now, you may have known in, the, in, the previous, in previous videos we've done mouse click because we want to determine when the mouse is clicked. This is mouse key, which tells us if what mouse button is being held down. So that's obviously we're going to need that for when we draw something on the screen. Um, well then we need to uh, get some variables, don't we? We need to get some values. So xm equals uh, x mouse and ym equals uh, y mouse. So what's going on here? The, the variables xm and ym are holding the values of x mouse coordinates and y mouse coordinates because we need those coordinates, don't we? We need to know where the mouse is on the screen. So we're finding out here, yes, my mouse has been clicked and the button's held down, but where is it on the screen? Okay. Then what we need to do, because those are hardware coordinates, uh, everybody, what I need to do here is now convert them to screen coordinates because we're drawing on the screen. So here we go. XS equals X screen XM. It's really that easy. This is why I love Amos. So what we're saying is in the variable XS, we're going to store the value of the conversion of XM into screen coordinates. And that's what the command X screen will do. So now I need to do Y screen. So YS equals Y screen uh, YM. That straightforward. So we've gone from, has our mouse been clicked? Where is it on the screen? Convert those hardware coordinates to screen coordinates by using the X screen and Y screen commands. And we are pretty much good to go. Um, so that is really how you do it. So with the coordinates converted, the next thing we need to do is actually um, print those coordinates uh, to the side panel um, because that's quite important <laughs> uh, and you'll see why later. So all I'm going to do now is just very quickly uh, locate uh, 30 comma 22 we're going to paper 7 um, we are going to pen 2 uh, we are going to print uh, x and give it a space, semicolon, XS, because that's our screen coordinate. Then we're going to do a semicolon, 
then we're going to do, oops, no, then we're going to do steady, we're going to do some spaces after that. Um, then we're going to do same for the Y, which will be at 30, 23. Yawning Angel, how did you know all of this? Trial and error, my friends, trial and error. Uh, just intuition, good guesses, and trial and error. It's the best way to do programming sometimes. Uh, so now we're going to do Y and space, uh, semicolon, YS, semicolon, quote, sum after that. Uh, oh, a syntax error. Uh, locate 30, comma, 23. Obviously, all of you watching this at home would have seen me do that, but because I'm looking at the keyboard and my prompter off to the side, I miss that. <laughs> Um, so is that working, Yawning Angel? Will that actually do anything? Well, let's press F1 and find out. Whoa, there's a big problem just there. There's a big problem just there. So no, that doesn't work. <laughs> so what we'll need to do is come back and have a look at why didn't that work? Right, we will come back and have a look at that in a minute. But this is the bit you've all been waiting for. Uh, this is quite important. What we need to do now is, has the left mouse button been held down? So what I'm going to do is say, uh, if m equals 1. Now, as we did back up here, let me just scroll back up to the, here a minute. Uh, we got mouse key was m. So 1 is left mouse button has been held down. Okay. And then what we're going to do is ink, uh, chosen ink. This will only be relevant, put a space in here. This will only be relevant when we come to have the color menu um, because each time we select a color, we want to change the ink that we're drawing with. Uh, but for now, it's always going to be nine, that lovely dark gray. Uh, here's the fun thing. So uh, plot XS comma uh, YS. So, and then we'll do an end if. F3 that. So what's happening here is if we're holding down the left mouse button with the ink that we have chosen, we're going to plot a little dot at positions X, S and Y, S, X and Y of the mouse as screen coordinates. And as we move the mouse, don't forget we're in a do loop, this code is constantly running. So it's constantly updating X, S and Y, S, and we should be able to have a bit of a trail follow the mouse. So what we're going to do Yawning Angel is going to go away, have another mouthful of tea, try and sort out his problem up here that he's got with his uh, side panel. And then we're going to, uh, I'll show you this running. Cool, let's do that. And here we are back with it. So I've sorted out what the problem was and the problem was here. I had three spaces. You only need two on this line. Uh, so when you're printing your X coordinate and your Y coordinate into the side panel, it's two spaces after, not three, because if you give it three, it does a carriage return onto the next line and Amos isn't happy. So um, we've got our coordinates printing to the side panel and now we've got, actually, we, we can start drawing now. So, so shall we do this? Let's dive in. Right, F1. And here we go. So as you can see, as I move my mouse, you can see these coordinates are updating down here in the side panel. This is pretty awesome. Yeah, really happy with, with that. That is looking good, okay. Right, uh, so now if I start to draw, if I click my mouse and start to drag it. Oh, look at that, we've got a line. We've got a line. So I'm holding my mouse button down. Mouse button is being held down. Obviously the faster I go, the line starts to trail because obviously Amos can't keep up. But if we go slowly, we've got an actual line. If I let go of the mouse, we stop drawing, click the mouse again, and here we go. Look at this. We're actually drawing. We have written, in really a, a few lines of code, a program with some menus. Admittedly, they don't work yet. But we've got an information panel showing us what's going on, what we're doing, and we can actually now plot a line on the screen. <gasps> Great stuff, right. Let's get on with the rest of it. Okay, that's pretty exciting stuff. So now what we can do uh, is get the screen in the right position because now we're gonna start handling the menus. So this is quite straightforward. How do we detect 
that the user has right clicked the mouse button and wants the menus to be activated. We use the following command. If choice, it's that simple. I just love Amos. This is why I love it. If choice, that's, that's what's gonna detect if we've hit the right mouse button. Um, and what I'm gonna do is just end if that. So we've got a bit of a loop going on here. I've tidy my code up. So then what we're gonna say, uh, so if choice is, have you hit the right mouse button? Are you accessing the menus? Then we're gonna say if choice, if I can spell it, um, if choice one equals one. Yep, so let's go down a bit and do an end if there as well. Just trying to keep this nested quite nicely. So what we're saying is if we've hit right mouse button, if you are selecting the first menu, menu one remember, so if choice one equals one, so the, if the menu you've gone into is that first menu, then what we need to do, if choice two equals one, stick with me on this, then we want to say save uh, IFF is the command to save the image file, my image. And that, no, come on, you're an angel, get it together. We need to put an end if in here. Right, tidy that up. So let's go through this. If choice, have you hit the right mouse button? If you've selected the first menu, so if your first menu choice is one, then if you, the within that menu, if you've selected the first option, which we know, if we go all the way back up to the top, yep, yeah, menu one is file, option one within there is save image. So if down here, and I'm saying, if I've gone into menu one, and if my option that I've selected is number one, then we need to save the file. The save file, I have to admit, this is actually quite unsexy because it just does this in the background and it will save it into whatever folder you are in. And we'll, we'll go on to that a little bit later. But for now, let's just get the menu set up. So uh, what else did we have in there? We also had the option to quit the program. So let's do that. So if choice two is three, rem quit, oh, quit program, end if. I always put the end ifs, I try to always put the end ifs in, so just, yeah, I don't forget. <laughs> uh, well, quite simply, we just want to end the program, don't we? So let's tidy that up. So this is what we're doing. So if we select the first option, we're going to save the image. If we select the third option within that menu, we're gonna end the program. Why the third one, Yawning Angel? Well, don't forget, if I go back to the top, Option three is quit. We don't want to be selecting option two because that's just a, a break line in, in that to break the menu up, yeah? So it's option three is quit. So if I come back down here, option three is quit the program. And that is that. So now if I press F1, here I am. So I go in and if I select quit, ta-da, the program ends. We now have a functioning menu. Right, so let's get on and do the next one. So uh, what's gonna happen for my second menu? So if, uh, ooh, if choice uh, one equals two, equals two. So what's happening here is we're gonna say, if you've selected the second menu, yeah, so now you know what's gonna happen. So if choice two, equals one, oops, come on, end if, tidy that up. So if we're in the second menu, and if we select the first option within there, yeah, what we're gonna do is we're gonna clear the screen, color two, and then we're going to go down to the side panel procedure just to tidy some things up there. That should be it for that. So if I test that by pressing F1, so we know that quit works. What we're gonna test now is clear. So let's just see what happens. If I just draw some doodles 
on the screen. I now go up here to clear, clears it away. And now I can go to quit and we are done. So uh, that was that and now I need to do the next menu. So uh, if choice one equals three, if we're in the third menu, <laughs> move my mouse out of the way. I'm so sorry, I will never learn. Um, so if I'm there, then what I need to do is set side panel uh, updated equals zero. Stick with me, stick with me. This will become apparent in a minute. Let me just indent that. Uh, then I need to go to a procedure called image menu because we handle all of this completely separately. Right, so let's just tidy that code up. Now, if I press F2, obviously we've got an undefined procedure because image menu, I haven't actually defined that procedure yet. But let's just be clear on what we've got here. We are checking the first menu, which is our file menu. We're checking the edit menu, and we're now going to check the image menu. So if I, I can't run the program because we've got an undefined procedure, but we've got those three sections in there. So that's all we're gonna do with menus in this main loop, because now what we're gonna do is pass control. If someone selects from the third menu, we're gonna pass control into another procedure, and we're gonna do that right now. Right, let's tidy that bit of code up. Now, now everybody, if you've made it this far, well done, because now you're probably going to need to strap yourselves in a bit tighter because things are going to get a little bit more interesting. Um, and I just want to stress, this is my way of writing this program. You may have other ways, and I know there are people who watch these videos who have far better understanding of some things over than what I do. And that's great. And I just love your comments and the way you come up with solutions for doing some things which I've struggled with. And I thank you for that. So bear in mind, this is the way I'm doing it. If you want to do it a different way, please feel free. Okay, so what we're going to do now, if uh, the user selects the third menu, uh, what we're going to do is dive in to the image menu. Uh, we've also set the side panel updated flag to zero, so it says it has not been updated because what we're going to need to do is force an update into that panel because we're going to change the graphics tool that we are using. Right, let's get going then. Uh, so if we pass control in here, we're still checking menus. Um, so what we want to do, uh, so uh, rem continue to check the menu selection because that's what we've passed over. Right, uh, so what we're going to say now is if choice two equals one. So um, if uh, so, if somebody has selected the first option, put the end if in there. It, ooh, no, under, I know I can't do anything until I've got this. Do you know what would be a really good idea, Yawning Angel? <laughs> what have we missed? We've missed actually defining the procedure uh, image menu. A little bit embarrassing, a little bit embarrassing. I would refilm this and edit this out, but do you know what? Sometimes it's good to see mistakes. There we go. So I'm so focused on the code, I forgot the, the basic thing of actually defining the procedure. So if we take the second option, uh, side panel equals zero. Uh, if so, if the side panel, oh no, side panel updated, side panel updated equals zero, then what we're going to do is say that our selected string now becomes line. A couple of spaces after that. Uh, then we're going to go to the oh, pan now. Then we're going to go to the side panel um, procedure. And then we're going to say side panel updated equals one. So what's happening here? So don't forget when we left here, so they'd selected the third menu, we'd set the side panel flag to zero to say it hasn't been updated. We dived into image menu. We've come into here and if they've selected the first option, we're checking, has the side panel been updated? No, it hasn't. 
change our selected string to line, dive into side panel and update it, come back and say we're now updated. Okay? And then what we need to do over here, we're setting a value t string, which I've just t for tool, uh, equals line. And then we're going to call another procedure, image tool, and we're going to pass t string into that. So we're basically saying they've selected the line tool. We're just setting a, a, a this is an internal variable, t string. We're saying line has been selected. Now I want you to go into this procedure called image tool and pass over that value of t string, which in this case is line. So I'm going to finish that. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is do exactly the same code for box and bar. Okay, the code is identical to this. Um, there may be a more streamlined way of doing it, but I'm going to do it this way. So I'm just going to stop the video here and add in this extra bit of code, and we'll come back in when I've got all that done, and I'll show you how it all works. Okay, another mouthful of tea. Good, good, right. So let's have a look and see what we've done here. So um, now we've got this menu selection working this like this. So if someone selected the first option in the third menu, it's line. If they've selected the second option, it's box. And if they've selected the third option, we've set it to F box or bar because that's the command we're going to use. Okay, so we've got three options in that menu. So what I have done, I've taken the liberty of actually just putting the procedure code in for the image tool um, procedure, which we call after each option has been selected, just so I can run this program. And I want you to watch what happens to the tool at the bottom here. So if I go up, and so this is my third menu, if I select the first option, it's line. Yeah, see, it says line. Uh, if I select the second one, it says box. And if I select the third one, field box. Okay, so that proves that that code is working. It's not doing anything because I haven't put the code in to make use of that functionality, but we've got that menu is now working beautifully. So I can now come out of here and quit. Right. Let's dive in. So, deep breath, everyone. This is a bit of a meaty, uh, a meaty bit of code. So uh, the first thing we're going to do, this is going to be a do loop in here. Okay. And in the do loop, um, what we're going to do is we're going to pretty much do the same thing again with the mouse. We're going to get those mouse coordinates. Uh, we're going to check for a mouse click this time, not a mouse key. Right, so just bear with me. Uh, so what we're going to do then is uh, rem uh, get the mouse click position. So here we're going to say m equals mouse click. Remember up above we use mouse key. This time we're using mouse click. So now we're going to get the x and, ma x and y mouse coordinates again. Uh, then we're going to convert them again and then we're going to put those coordinates into the side panel. And then we're going to start dealing with that positioning. Now we're going to duplicate a piece of code here. Now there's a number of options. Sometimes you can have another procedure which will just take up the heavy lifting of duplicated code. Um, or you can literally just replicate the code. For the ease of use in this program, I'm replicating the code. And I want to show you something. So because I'm using similar code, I'm going to go elsewhere to the program and copy that code and paste it in here, <coughs> excuse me, so I don't have to type it all out again. Um, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to go back up to our main do loop. So this is our main, main loop, yeah? And what I'm going to do, because we use mouse key there, we're now using mouse click, but I need the same code. I need that XMYM mouse, uh, I need the XSYS, and I need to be able to print this. 
I may actually take this and put it into a procedure later on, but for now we're doing it this way. So there's no right or wrong, just better or slightly more better. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do now is on the keyboard, I'm to copy this, unless you know this in Amos, I'm gonna hit Control and B, which puts me into block mode. And you see my cursor has changed now to a solid cursor, solid square. And now with my arrow keys, I'm just going to go down. And as you can see, it's highlighting that code. When I get to just beyond the code I want to copy, I now hit Control and S, and it tells me that block was stored in memory. So now, and my cursor has returned to normal. So now I scroll down to where I want that code to go. Uh, ba, 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 ba. This program's getting long, isn't it? Uh, right, and I want it to go in here after the M mouse click. Yeah, with me. So now I'm gonna hit, Control P for paste, and it dumps that code in there. Leaves the original code at the top of the program. It's just taken a copy of that code, and it's dumped us in here. Right, now I can get on with some exciting stuff. So, uh, rem deal with the start position. Right, so what I'm gonna do to draw a line, a bar, or a box, what we're gonna do is move the mouse to where we want it to be, click, let go, move to our second coordinate, click, let go. So that's telling Amos I'm gonna draw from here to here, do my box from here to here, ba 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 ba, etc. Don't worry, it's, it's actually dead straightforward. Um, so what I'm gonna do then is if m equals one, so, and enter that if, um, so if I've actually clicked the mouse, because remember m is mouse click, um, then I'm going to go to a procedure called two mouse clicks. <clears throat> You're probably wondering, Yawning Angel, what is that going to do? Well, I'll tell you what we'll do. We will write that right now. So let's go here, and it's in this space here. Procedure two mouse clicks. And prop. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to say uh, xm equals x mouse, okay? We're going to say ym equals y mouse, and then I'm going to say if xs or if xs one equals zero. Bear with me. I'm going to explain this in a minute. Xs one equals x screen. XM. This code probably looks familiar because we've used something like this further up uh, the screen. Uh, y screen equals, oh no, it doesn't equal. <laughs> uh, YM and plot uh, XS1, comma, YS1. Okay. Else uh, XS2 equals x screen xm uh, ys2 equals y screen ym. Just follow along this. You're probably thinking, what is he doing? He's finally lost it. This makes no sense. Don't worry. It, it does and it works. Trust me. Uh, and diff. Bang. Right, let's make, let me explain what's going on here. What I'm trying to do with this procedure is get the, coord the start and end coordinates for our line or our box, or whatever. So we come into here, we get the X and Y mouse values, and we store them in XM and YM. Then I'm saying XS1 is a value. So when we, do a, when we draw a line or anything, we're going to use XS1, YS1, XS2, and YS2 as our X and Y start and end coordinates. So if we haven't got a value, we're going to get the screen coordinates of XM. Don't forget, mouse is in hardware coordinates. We need that converted to screen coordinates. And we're gonna set XS1 and YS1 based on that. And then we're gonna plot a dot, just where I first clicked my mouse. Um, and effectively, it's gonna come into this procedure each time to get that start and end coordinates. So uh, that's gonna set our um, XS1 value. Then we need to set our XS2 value, so I'll move the mouse, click again. This procedure is then called again. It gets its X and Y mouse coordinates, and then it will just convert them to screen coordinates and plot our XS2 and YS2 coordinates. 
And because those are global variables, don't forget we define them as global variables at the top, they will store the values quite nicely. Um, and we will have some coordinates to draw our line. Right, so two mouse clicks has been called. Uh, so two mouse clicks has been called and the first time through it's only going to have the values of XS1 and YS1 in it. Um, so what we're going to do then is set M to zero. Okay, oh I've got an end if. Uh, you're right, I do have an end if without uh, an end if. Let's uh let me just get rid of that one right do that so um effectively what's going to happen then the first time we come into this don't forget this is in a loop all right we've gone into a procedure which is in another loop so the first time through it comes in it goes right i'm going to has the mouse been clicked yes it has i'm going to get those coordinates store them off and then i'm going to dive into this uh procedure called two mouse clicks okay and then in two mouse clicks, I'm going to get my X uh, and Y mouse coordinates, and I'm going to convert them over from hardware coordinates to screen coordinates. And there's probably a more efficient way of doing that, but we'll come to that in a, in a future video. Um, what I'm going to do is I, I want to get what I want to get out of here is XS1, yeah, uh, and YS1, and XS2 and YS2. The first time this comes in, it's only going to populate XS1 and YS1 because that's all we've got. And then I'm going to set that to zero. M is set to zero when I come back out of here. And then what I'm going to do is if uh, XS1, uh, sorry, if XS2 not equal to zero and XS1 not equal to zero, let's just end that if there, then we need to do some stuff. Okay, so if I have an XS2 and a YS, an, an XS2 and an XS1, I've got some coordinates. I've got my start and end coordinates. I can do some stuff. If I haven't, what's going to happen is this will not do anything. It will come out of here. Let's just uh, get rid of some of these spaces. Yeah, it will just go through this loop again until I click the mouse for the second time. And then it's going to dive in here and go, oh, actually, mouse is M is one. I need to go into two mouse clicks again. It's going to drop into two mouse clicks and go, well, XS1 is not zero because I've already got that. Well, in this case, then I'm going to set XS2 and YS2 and plot my second position. Dive back out. And now with XS2 and XS1 now populated with values, we can start to do some stuff. And stuff is good. Um, so what I'm going to say then is ink, chosen ink. This will only become apparent um, and useful you know, when we've sorted out the, the ink menu. But for now, we're just going to put this code in here. So then what we're going to do, let's tidy that up. If, because we passed a value into this, didn't we? We passed a value of TL string into here. And what we're going to say is if TL string equals line, yeah, and let's just end if on that. Then I want to use the draw command. I want to draw XS1 comma YS1, yeah to xs2 comma ys2 just tidy that up that will be my draw command that will be my like let me get the mouse pointer out of the way yawning angel seriously okay so by the time i come into this code i've got my xs1 and xs2 ys1 and ys2 values set i'm just going to draw a line it's going to be that easy right so let's see so we're there we've got no errors so let's see what happens when I run this. Okay, so I'm going to go up here and select line. Line is now selected. I'm going to click. Look at that. I've got a dot. And if I move across and click again, I've got a line. I have a line. Look at that. How good is that? That is lovely. Right, that is working. I need to quit. And the quit's not working because I have broken something else <laughs> but we'll come back to that in a minute I need to put an X in here no it's because I haven't finished writing this code yet so what we're going to do is do exactly the same code as this but for bar and for box so what I'm going to do is copy this code but actually I'm going to make a change I'm not going to use if end if all the time what I'm going to do is change this one to else if yep yeah. 
So what we can do then is if tl string equals, uh, is it box? What's next? Box. Just reading my, my notes. Uh, move that mouse out of the way. Uh, else if tl string equals box. And then what we're going to do here, well, what I'm going to do is actually copy this line. So control B again, move to the end of that. Uh, control S, come down here. Oops, fingers and thumbs, control P, change this to box because in AMOS, draw, box, bar, all use the same format. Start X and Y, end X and Y coordinates. And then I'm going to do else if tl string equals, uh, this should be bar. Uh, do that. Can I do that again? Yes, I can. Uh, we should have that endif already in place. No, we don't. We don't, yawning angel. Got carried away with my endifs again. Endif. Sort that out. And I don't want that to be box. I want this one to be bar. These are options. Draw, box, and bar. Okay. When we've done that, what we need to do is call a procedure called blank mouse coords because we've we've done our draw. Now we just need to reset everything. Um, then we need to set side panel updated equals zero, and then I need to exit this undefined procedure. I know, I know, so I need to do that. Let's do that quickly. Uh, so here I've got a very quick routine, whoops, which will just clear down my coordinates. So procedure, whoop, no, procedure. Uh, what did I call this? I called this blank mouse coords. And proc. We've done a lot, haven't we? Are you still with me? Make sure you're still drinking the tea or the coffee. Keep you going. Uh, quite simple. XS1 equals zero. Uh, YS1 equals zero. XS2 equals zero. YS2 equals zero. That's it. That's all I have to do. And the reason I put this into a procedure is because if we want to add anything else in here that we need to clear down, we can just dump it straight in there. Right, let me go back up. Um, let's go, so F3 looks good. We've got a lot of spaces in here. Let's just get rid of these spaces. Quite straightforward. Right, so uh, we're gonna save it, Amiga S, F1. Right, so let's go. I'm gonna draw a line, click, click. Look what's happened down here. It's gone back to plot because now I haven't got line selected anymore. It's gone back to plot. If I go back up here and select box, it changes to box. Click one, click two, there's my box. It goes back to plot, so I'm back to freehand drawing. And then I can go back up here and select filled box, which changes to filled box there, and I can now go click one, click two. There's my filled box, and then it goes back to my plot. And then I should be able to quit the program, the program quits. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a very quick, <laughs> quick and simple graphics editing tool. Brilliant. Okay, I appreciate there was a lot to get through there, so please just go through and re-watch bits of this video if it was a bit too much. We have covered quite a lot, and I do apologize. But you know, if you wanna write the big programs, you gotta put the time in <laughs> and drink a lot of tea and coffee. Right, so, um, you know, effectively all this code, some of it we may rationalize going forward in future videos. We're going to add extra functionality to this. We're gonna look at adding a circle command, um, circle handle, handle slightly differently. Um, we're going to look at maybe a zoom function as well. We're gonna get those colors sorted out. Uh, but effectively, pressing F1, I've got a program which shows me my coordinates as I move the mouse. I've got, I start off with a basic freehand plot functionality. Um, I can't draw, as you know by now, I am not an artist. Uh, I can go and select a line. I can go and select a box. I can go and select a filled box. 
uh, and each time I come out of one of the image options I'm back into my freehand plotting. We may change that. We may look to put some buttons on the screen. Who knows? Uh, the world is our oyster. But if you made it this far and you've got a working program, well done. Thank you for following along. This is fun and we're going to keep enhancing it in future videos. Woohoo! And that is it for another video. Thank you ever so much for watching. In the next video, we're gonna to look to expand on this program, put some more features in there. We'll get that color menu working as well. That's gonna be interesting. Um, don't forget the code for this program is available for download on my website. Just go to the link here to the downloads page and you should be able to get it. Um, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you wish. I do a number of these Amos tutorial videos as well as some other retro videos. Uh, there's a link to the Amos uh, tutorial playlist just up here. Um, you can find me on the Twitter, the Mastodon. I have a Ko-fi account link up here if you want to support me on Ko-fi. I want to say thank you to everyone who has already. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you once again to everyone who has given me loads of comments and uh, ideas for future videos. I really appreciate that. And I've got some great stuff coming up in the future. So thank you one and all. Right, and that's it. So thanks once again for watching this. Uh, and until the next one, whatever you do, take care of yourselves and keep it retro.